Welcome back here, we're having the second part of exercise number two, where we look at C4V. As I didn't mention it, but the difficulty in the first part with, with a C3V was that you had to use the permutations according to the Borg cube representation of C3V. And that made things a little difficult. For example, the symmetry adapted wave function. So if we looked at the D2 basis functions, they split it when moving to the irreducible representations in the presence of C3V symmetry. Or the calculations where we looked at how the basis functions transform according to the uh, symmetry operations of the group, they behaved not very well. You see that when you do the calculations for C3V, things are a lot easier. You have to do a little more calculations, but the calculation itself is, is a little easier. And therefore I will only sketch here the results and won't go into the details. Again, if you have questions or comments or something is not clear to you, please send me an email and I will do this a little more thorough. So this is the character table of C4V. Here you have the conjugacy classes and here you have the five uh, irreducible representations which are named with delta 1, delta 1 prime, delta 2, delta 2 prime and delta 5. When you do the same thing as a, with the C3V and the basis functions of D0, D1 and D2, you end up having here only ones. Here it's again three-dimensional, you have one, minus one, 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 and here you it's five-dimensional, minus one, 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 one. So d0 in the presence of c4v is nothing else than delta one. d1 in the presence of c4v is by the decomposition theorem nothing else than delta one plus delta five and d2 in the presence of this symmetry is delta 1 plus delta 2 plus delta 2 prime plus delta 5. You can check this by looking at the characters. So what do we have here? So when we have SO3 and we move to C4V, our orbitals, the S, P and D orbital, split like the following. The s orbital moves to the delta 1 irreducible representation. The p orbital splits into delta 5 and delta 1. Again the order of this is not clear from group theory. And the d, uh, the d orbital splits into the four different uh, irreducible representations namely delta 1, delta 2, delta 2 prime and delta 5. Now we look at the uh, symmetry adapted wave functions. Here as I mentioned before things are a lot easier. In delta 1, 1, z and 3, z squared minus r squared live. In delta 2 you can see that when you, when you project when you project x squared minus y squared into this uh, irreducible representation, you end up having uh, the same polynomial. Delta 2 prime uh, is nothing else than xy and in delta 5 you have x comma y and xz comma yz. The plausibility of all this can be checked in exercise number 3 I recommend you to watch that immediately afterwards because then you see the use of uh, these polynomials which live in the uh, irreducible representations of the C4V group for example or as you see in the next exercise in the C infinity V group which is kind of the more general example. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, see you next time.